Um, hello, congratulations. Uh, Sandy, first of all, I wondered how you're doing after taking a charge from JJ. Jump right back up, didn't I? Still got it. Um, that was the craziest yeah, thing, honestly. Probably would have been a blog. And I was, um, I'm a little embarrassed, to be quite honest. I was like, oh, God, do I dance? What do I do here? Um, but I was like, yeah, no, nothing happened. We're good. No problem. I'm good. No problem. Um, Sabrina, you came out and played so, so well. I mean, from the jump, you know, you hit that floater and you had 12 points the first quarter. Um, did you feel like you needed to prove something after uh, the other night or were you extra locked in? Like, what was going on? No, I mean, just continuing to read the game, um, you know, understanding what I, what I didn't do well last game and being able to adjust quickly and go back, you watch film, figure out ways that you can continue to improve and not really be complacent with the way that they were defending me and um, kind of able to, you know, get up the floor and, and set screens a lot higher really helped to just get open and um, thankfully my teammates found me. Stewie, or any, if anyone else wants to jump in, what did you all say to yourself in between the third and fourth quarters? There was that weird momentum shift with the mm -hmm. three-pointer that almost went in, but then you guys came out in the fourth and really just put the clamps down. <clears throat> um, that They made their run. And, you know, whether they had momentum or not, we were going to take it back. We knew we had Leo and JJ in foul trouble and them coming in in the fourth. Um, just being confident behind that, being aggressive and – uh, we were able to scramble, put them in tough situations offensively, and then kind of take whatever we wanted on the other end. Um, Sandy, uh, so JJ obviously dealt with foul trouble again, but she found a way to, I guess, lead you guys to a different result this time. How did she just find a way this afternoon on both sides of the ball. Um, yeah, no, it was really big for us. You know, we spoke about it um, pre-game about, you know, JJ. Um, she's important for us to win this series. Um, you know, a little frustrating with her with her fouls, um, but I thought she maintained her emotional stability there and went back in and we spaced her a fair bit. She was making shots, you know. She made three big shots and um, defended really well. Um, you know, it's just staying in the moment. Uh, we just kept saying, you're going to be fine. Just keep being positive with her. Um, and But, you know, we needed her. When we had the foul trouble, when Leia could go back on and JJ was there, I think that was our that was our best lineup. But also Courtney Vandersloot, you know, obviously went with her in that fourth quarter. She was a difference maker there. Having another ball handler, I thought we it was a great unit out there. And to keep Vakers, what, to 24 points in the second half, that's pretty impressive. Also to follow up for the players, when you left the floor after doing what you've wanted to do for so long, you know, get back to the finals, what thoughts were moving through your mind, just embracing the current moment? Mm. <clears throat> that we haven't done anything yet. Um, that this was uh, a tough series, an emotional series for, you know, a number of different reasons, but uh, we're going to the finals. And we're hosting game one and game two, and we'll see who we play, but we're ready to go. And um, just the, the feeling of not satisfied, I think. Uh, Sabrina or Stewie, either one of you, you said that the job isn't done yet, but I'm just curious, having to face Vegas two years in a row, finally getting past them this time, did it feel at all like you were getting over any kind of hurdle? <clears throat> Uh, no, I mean, no hurdle besides just getting back to the finals. Um, for us, I think we've talked about every year, it's New York versus New York. It's not, you know, us versus anybody else. Um, you know, we want to go out there and be the best that we can be no matter what team it is. Um, and I think we were able to do that this series. Um, it was really nice to see how we just stuck together. Obviously, we, we had a kind of rough game last game, and um, it can go one of two ways. You can come back out and kind of put your head down and not be the best and rely on going back to game five. But we came out here and understood we, we wanted to be our best and get this done um, because we deserve that. We've played like that all year. And so for us, it was just continuing to focus on ourselves, being the best that we can offensively and defensively. And in turn, that leads to a great win for us. And just one other question. Um, how happy are you guys, or are you happy, obviously, that you got it done, but you'll have an extra day of rest, you know, more rest. Is that helpful for you? Not very happy. I mean, yeah. what? Um, this, you guys know, this playoff schedule is like extremely condensed. If you go to a game five, you have one day to prepare for game one of the finals. That's like insane. Um, and, you know, none of us are, are able to be in charge of it. So there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, for, for any of you, um, 
I guess for Sabrina or Stewie, the, the flow of this game was just very weird, very choppy, a lot of stoppages. How do you, I mean, it didn't, it didn't look like Liberty basketball, but it certainly got the result that you wanted. Like, how did you achieve what you wanted to despite that lack of flow? You want me to take it? Yeah, go, okay, go ahead. I'm go on ahead. a roll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Liberty basketball can be seen in a, a number of different ways, you know? Um, yeah, we want to play fast. We want to hit threes. We want to run. We want to do all these things. But you know what? We want to win. And if it takes to win ugly, um, I feel like the, the choppiness of the game is a credit to us to stay locked in. Like whether JJ and Sandy take each other out or <laughs> they're reviewing stuff or whatever the case may be. Um, we just continue to, to keep pushing and, and make sure that, you know, excuse me, the five that were on the court, we were definitely locked in on, on what we needed to do. Quick follow up. You said you haven't done anything yet. You still really feel like that having made it to the finals that you haven't done anything yet. We went to the finals last year and we didn't do nothing. Didn't win. Don't win. There's no satisfaction there, is there? Question uh, for any of you. Um, Playing a team like the Las Vegas Aces over the years, how have they made you a stronger, more resilient team over the years? They've made us a better team. Um, to like for me particularly as um, someone who's kind of been a part of this like new generation, um, I wasn't able to watch like the Minnesota Lynx and all those teams when they were on their run. When when I was younger, I wasn't really a part of the league, and now being able to be a part of the league and see their excellence year after year. To do what they've done is not easy. Like, you know, we've we've gotten there and lost. They've gotten there and, and won twice. And it, it's a testament to their togetherness, um, their experience, how hard it is that they're um, wanting to go out there and be their best every night. And they've laid down the foundation and they continue to motivate everyone in the league to just want to be better and want to win championships. And so uh, we've always respected them. Um, we have the utmost respect for what they've been able to accomplish, what Becky's done here in a short amount of time. And, um, you know, thank them for helping us get continue to get better. Uh, back here, a uh, quick one for you, Coach. It felt like there was an early emphasis for Brianna Stewart initiating as a pick and roll ball handler, and beyond that, also kind of clearing those wings and opening up that space for her. Um, what kind of popped on the film for you in game three that led to that decision? Well, I mean, we've been continuing to develop Stewie as a handler, and we just uh, they didn't want to switch any kind of pick and roll, so why not use her in the pick and roll action? I thought it was very effective for us. Um, Shui does so many great things for us, um, and she was massive for us. We had to make a guard plumb tonight. I thought she did a, an excellent job uh, chasing all the guards around. She loved it, mm -hmm. didn't you? Yeah, loved yep, it. Yep, loved, loved it. it. Um, but, yeah, she's just a high, high energy, highly skilled, so let's just use all her skills. We'll go over to Zoom with Perry. Did you say Perry? Perry. Yep. Oh, hey, guys. Congratulations. Um, so, obviously, you fought so hard for that that one seed. Now, you know, 50% on the road, but undefeated at home. What is that home field advantage? What are you expecting it to be as you move into the finals? I hope it's uh, sold out. I hope it's 18,000. I think that's about what Barclays gets. And, yeah. um, you know, home court advantage is, is a real thing, and especially when you get to, to this point because – it's so loud that you can't hear. And, you know, especially for us in game three, it was so loud here yeah. that we could not hear. Um, and that's the, the toughness of going on the road. We'll get two more in the room. Thank you. Yeah, for Brianna, you, you talked a little bit about and coached about what you were doing defensively. Um, it seemed like you guys were able to uh, get them to take the shots more you wanted them to take yeah. tonight. Can you talk about your role in that and just the, the team's role? Because I know there's been so many adjustments in this series, yeah. but. Uh, I mean, you held them to 62 points. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, what Sandy talked about, um, just switching the matchups, me kind of being on plum, which means, um, you know, the the big guards are switching. I'm switching with Asia and JJ, um, giving them different looks. But I think, honestly, the difference maker was the way that we scrambled. You know, we might have put ourselves in a two-on-one situation, but in game three, they got easy looks. In game three, they got walk-up threes. Um, and we had higher pickup points and made sure that, you know, no matter what, we want to give them a contested shot. We'll finish with Lindsay. Um, Stu, you mentioned that it was an emotional series mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons. After the game, Marta was yep. very happy yep. and was wiping away some tears. Yep. Can you um, give us a little more information on? Yeah, um, it, it definitely was emotional, and I'll try not to get emotional, but um, Marta's uh, – father my father-in-law passed away last year yesterday 
Um, so no matter what, it's it's a really tough time. And um, just the way that the series went last year, kind of going through all of that um, and making sure that, you know, this year is different and, and continuing to, you know, Marta and I talk about doing doing everything that her dad would want us to do, and, and we continue to do that. Um, and, you know, I, I have receipts on, on the things that were said that, you know, the, the entire team does, but for really my mentality was today was to go in and get this win for um, my wife and, and her, her dad. What's his name? Joseph. So like Joseph without the H. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.